I now would like to introduce one of our famous board members, Amy Anderson, who is going to speak to the impact of spay-neuter on reducing aggression, population, and suffering. Amy Anderson is an SPCA board member. She also is the former director of animal control at the Maui Humane Society, and she was a Maui Police Department instructor. Would you please welcome Amy Anderson? Aloha, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. This is just mm, touches my heart. Um, I have to do a bit of a disclaimer before I do my presentation because, you know, I'm from the real world where I saw real life problems, cruelty. And I tend to um, realize that the photos that I'm going to show you are, they're graphic. They are going to affect some of you more so than others. But I do need to warn you about that because I don't want to offend anybody. But this is the real world. And all but one of these photos that you're going to see um, are from Maui. This all happens in Maui. And I'm not used to this, so you're going to have to, you know, bear with me in my futzing around. Okay, Dr. Kaufman made some excellent um, remarks about the health benefits of spay and neuter. One of the things I just wanted to add, because these are cases that are commonly presented here, and this is cases of severe demodectic mange um, that's actually become a secondary bacterial infection. This is, um, these animals suffer, obviously, greatly. And the problem with this is that it's very important that dogs that have this generalized demodectic mange are spayed because they do believe there is a hereditary component that this can be passed on through genetics, the propensity to get demodectic mange um, from the mother. And it is highly recommended by any responsible person, any veterinarian, that animals that have this in their genealogy must be spay or neutered. A lot of folks out here, they don't see this but people that work in the animal welfare um, world, uh, we do. And the, sorry. All three of these dogs were presented in Maui. The one pri in the prior slide um, died just a few hours after that photo was taken. Yeah, that's how severe it was. Yes, the owner had a responsibility to, to do something, to intervene prior to it getting to that point, but unfortunately that didn't happen and the animal suffered and died. I want to talk about um, aggression. And Dr. Kaufman did allude to uh, aggression in intact dogs, but the statistics nationally are quite interesting. Approximately 75% of all dog bites reported are by intact male dogs. That's a fact. So for those people say, I don't want to spare neuter my dog because he'll be less of a dog, less of a man, as Dr. Kaufman said, um, that's a fact, and you can't get away from that fact. That's a huge number. Uh, these particular people, uh, the gentleman, he actually got involved uh, between two dogs that were fighting, his dog, a uh, female intact, and an intact female pit bull who had puppies. They lived on the same property. What happened is they fought and he got in the middle of it and he was severely injured. The picture, the other picture is the arm of a female who was bit um, by a male German Shepherd. And this was a dog that was known to her as most dogs that cause dog bites are known to the victim or they are at least familiar with the dog. According to recent surveys, 4.8 million people are bit in the United States each year. 4.8 million people. A thousand Americans per day are treated in emergency rooms as a result of dog bites. That's a phenomenal amount. The majority of the dog bite victims are children. And this particular child is a two-year-old boy from Pukalani. Um, he left his house, walked down into the yard, where two intact dogs were tied, but they were fighting. And he got in the middle of it. He was severely injured, and children cannot tolerate this type of trauma. They are much more susceptible to dying from this type of trauma. 
fortunately, this child survived. Free pets, a, a good home is a recipe for disaster. Free pets, we see it all the time, ads free. Free to good home, free to good home. We see it, you know, at Craigslist, in the newspaper. They're often a mistake, a, a result of mistake breeding. And, you know, pets that are obtained for free are less likely to be spay or neutered. They're less likely to routine, uh, receive re routine or emergency vet care. They're more likely to be abused, neglected, or discarded. Animal hoarders, something to think about. We, you know, the, with the TV show that we see, now that's a big deal on TV, right? Animal hoarders. We in the Animal Welfare um, Society are so glad that they're putting this on television now because uh, we know about it, but the public really doesn't know about it. And they're seeing the effects of what animal hoarding really is about. And it is a huge problem in the United States and worldwide. But they often search for free to good home ads because they think they're going to rescue an animal. And in fact, as we see from a lot of these television programs, we know how they end up, don't we? Not a good thing. They also end up often um, in the hands of dog fighters to be used as bait dogs. This is a real common thing, and if you folks don't think we have, don't have dog fighting here, yes, we do. It is a felony here. Um, it's very often underground because it is a felony. It carries quite a severe uh, penalty, but we definitely have it here. And dogs that go missing and dogs that are stolen and dogs that are gotten from free to good home ads, guess where a lot of them end up? They may also end up as breeding stock for a backyard breeder. This is an example of a free to good home. And I, I'm more of a storyteller because I can relate to, you know, these, these situations that happen. Let me tell you the story about this 12-week-old puppy. This 12-week-old puppy was um, with its littermates in a box on the side of the uh, street in Kahului, and um, they were free to good home. The person that got this puppy was a 14-year-old girl. She took the puppy home, and within a few hours, she had bashed the puppy against the wall and killed it. Now, granted, to be fair to her, and I know that sounds very strange coming from somebody that loves animals, this girl was a severe schizophrenic. And when I interviewed her at the hospital, um, we couldn't prosecute. You can't prosecute somebody that's mentally ill. But how was she so easily able to get a puppy on the side of the road because it was free to good home, somebody had a mistake litter, and they just needed to find a home? And this is the result. This is a free rabbit, probably gotten as a little bunny. And what happened with this rabbit is he was probably real cute when they first got him, one of, probably an Easter present, one of these little Easter presents, you know, the chicks and the, the bunnies. Well, this bunny ended up being, living in a cage in its own filth. And as you can see, what happened here is the urine burns were so severe that it completely eviscerated the, the um, testicle area. Those are his testicles, or what used to be his testicles. Um, severe infection, maggots, and he did not survive. Excuse me. With excess, even feeling animals become disposable objects. When there's an excess of a commodity, that commodity loses its value and importance. It becomes something to be dismissed or even despised. At worst, it can become disposable, or, I'm sorry, it can be disposable. Unfortunately, society views excess animals as one of those disposable commodities. Kind of one of the recent analogies I'd like to give about this, rain, water. Gee, it seems like a few months ago we were in a horrible drought and we wanted water, we needed water desperately. Water had such a value. Well, yeah, now look what's happening. We despise it because it's been causing havoc. And it's a strange analogy, but unfortunately, when a with regards to animals, oftentimes they are looked at the same. Anytime there is an overabundance of anything, guess what happens? They lose their value. We, we, they're expendable.
this is a perfect example of a, dispo a disposable mentality. Um, here's the story on this one. These, this, the dog to your left um, was tied on a trolley at the old Maui swap meet on Punene Avenue. And the owner um, did not properly secure the um, harness and the tie out. The dog hung itself. I don't know if it was a free dog or not, but it's a mixed breed. I'm not sure if he paid any money for it. You could chalk that up to a mistake, chalk it up to he needs education to do it right the next time. The picture on the right is a week later. He got himself another dog, tied it in the exact same place. When we got there, he was choking too. Fortunately, this one didn't die as a result of it. And yes, he was successfully prosecuted for animal cruelty. But this is, what kind of mentality do we as a public, uh, if we lose one, we'll just get another. And that unfortunately is the mentality that so many people in our public have. And that's got to stop. Both dog fighting and neglect are symptoms of devaluation of life. Uh, the dog on the left was used as a bait dog for dog fighting. Oftentimes with bait dogs, they'll actually tape their muzzles shut so they can't fight back and inflict um, damage on the dog that they are training because that is the valued dog. That's the dog that brings home the bacon, brings home the money. The other one is expendable. The dog on the right is something all too common seen in animal welfare and that is a collar wound. It looks like they try to decapitate the dog, and frankly, he could have very well, that he could have died from this. Fortunately, he did not. But this is really common. And they've got it as a puppy. This is how it happens, right? They get it as a puppy. They don't change the collar, expand, you know, expand the collar over time, and it grows into the neck, and it causes severe damage, and obviously severe pain. This is an animal that's living at their house. How can they ignore this? But it happens all the time. We see it on Animal Planet. We see these type of wounds on the Animal Planet shows. So these are the type of things we really are trying to get our community, and that means all of you, to spread the word and say, you know what? We revere our animals. But as long as there's an excess and you can just get another or get another, and they're free for the picking, we are going to continue to have these problems. This island has seen way too much of this kind of abuse. And again, I know the people that work in animal welfare see this every day. And this is just heart-wrenching. And it really, truly has to stop. For example, the top photo, this is a dog, a pit bull breeding dog, that, that she lost her value. Maybe she couldn't have any more puppies. She was shot in the head. Just get rid of her. Let's get an, a younger one that can produce more puppies, hopefully more money. The dog on the right was left in a holding kennel after night, or in the middle of the night. Its leg is torn off. Its leg has been torn off for quite some time. I guess the owner just figured, nah, you know, we'll just put it in a holding kennel. Throw it away. This has got to stop. And the three bottom, they're all three different dogs. And these are dogs that are basically have no value. So why should we bother feeding them? We'll just leave them behind. The one on the left was left behind in the garage. Thank God somebody finally found it because otherwise it would have starved to death. And it almost did, as you can clearly see. So that's my presentation, guys. And the thing is, you know, again, like Dr. Kaufman said, we know we're speaking to the choir. But for every single one of you that spreads the word to someone else about we as a community are not going to tolerate treatment of animals like this. We are not going to tolerate, oh, it's okay if your dog has puppies or your cat has kittens. We, all of us, have to work together to make sure that this stops so we get the value back for those animals that deserve it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amy.